Gerda turned and ran into the freezing cold snow. Very soon she could see nothing but snowflakes, which seemed to get larger and larger as she ran on. Then she realised that they were moving all by themselves and closing in on her. They swirled into shapes of fearsome creatures. Some looked like great icy bears with razor sharp teeth and others were like huge frosty serpents. Please spare me, Gerda breathed. Her breath came in white puffs into the cold air. There she is. Before her eyes, the little puffs of breath drew together and became tall white figures with shields and spears. They surrounded her like guards and battled with the snowflake creatures. Gerda stumbled on, half frozen to death. She reached the Snow Queen's palace and slipped inside the jagged, frosty gates. The walls and floors of the palace were polished ice and from the ceiling hung vast chandeliers, each made from hundreds of glittering icicles. Gerda ran through the chilly corridors until she came to a cavernous hall. It was filled with a giant frozen lake shattered into countless pieces. In the middle of the lake was the Snow Queen's throne. Luckily, the throne was empty as the Snow Queen was not at home. Before she left, she had given Kate a task to keep him occupied. Arrange these shards of ice to spell out the word eternity, she had told him, and you shall be your own master. You may have the whole world to roam in and a new pair of ice skates. Since then, Kay had been pushing the huge ice shards around, trying to arrange them into letters, but he could barely think, let alone work out how to do it. When Gerda came into the hall, he was sitting on a block of ice in despair. Gerda gave a cry of joy when she saw him. I found you, she said, rushing over to him. But Kay could barely hear her. He was so frozen into the Snow Queen's power that nothing else could move him. He stared at Gerda blankly. Gerda wrapped her arms around him and burst into tears. I've come across the world to take you home, Kay, she sobbed. I love you more than anything. Suddenly, a tiny light appeared in the little boy's eyes. Gerda kissed him on the cheek. And warmth seeped into his body. She kissed him again and roses bloomed in his cheeks. All at once, Kay remembered everything. He looked at Gerda and saw his best friend standing there. How could I have forgotten you? He whispered, his eyes filling with tears. As the tears spilled down his face, the ice splinter that had been lodged in his eye was washed away. The warm love in his heart melted the splinter that had been stuck there too. At last, Kay was back to his old self. He put his arms around Gerda and squeezed her tightly. Gerda squeezed him even more tightly and they both burst out laughing. Their laughter rang across the hall, making the icicles chime and the great shards of ice sing in harmony. Then something very strange began to happen. All the shards of ice in the hall began to move. They arranged themselves slowly into shapes. They're making letters, said Gerda. Oh, I can't believe it, Kay whispered, as the shards of ice spelt out the words that were set him free. Eternity. Gerda, I'm free, said Kay. Then what are we waiting for? Gerda said, pulling him to his feet. Come on, quickly, let's go home. The two friends ran out of the hall, but then a voice stopped them in their tracks. Who goes there, sneaking away like thieves in the night? It hissed, reaching through the corridors like fingers of ice. The children's hearts thumped with terror, and then the Snow Queen appeared. She snort, stalked down the corridor towards them, tall and cold and furious. Get back into the hall, she snarled and her glare looked as if it would shatter the children where they stood. I will not, Kay said bravely. The ice shards spell the word eternity. You go and see for yourself. Your power cannot hold me here any longer. The two children slipped past the Snow Queen and ran out of the palace doors. They passed the fallen shapes of snow creatures, half crumbled where they lay and ran on through the open sparkling snow. Behind them, the defeated Snow Queen let out a wail like shattering ice, but there was nothing she could do to stop them. 
It seemed like no time at all before they had reached the tiny hut where the old lady lived and where the reindeer was waiting for Gerda. They told their story with sparkling eyes and flushed cheeks over bowls of warming soup. Then the two children climbed onto the reindeer's back and set off for home. Bar flew like the wind, his hooves barely touching the ground. The snow gradually petered out and the forests began. But they went on and on and on through the trees until they reached a meadow and a winding stream. I think we can find our own way from here, said Gerda, slipping down from the reindeer's back. Bar, thank you for everything you've done for us. Now it's time for you to go back to your homeland and be happy. I'll never forget you. Bar replied softly and bowed his head for one last embrace. Gerda and Kay found a little boat bobbing on the banks of the river. They climbed aboard and rowed back home. Grandmother was there to welcome them, overjoyed to see them safe and sound. Now you must have a story or two to tell me, she said. A lot of time had passed since they'd been away, but summer had come again. When Gerda and Kay went up to their roof garden, they found that the roses were just coming into bloom. That was a story by Hans Christian Andersen.